if I could show you my text message conversation with Tatiana, you would think that I'm a lunatic because it's just blue, 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 blue. There's never, there's never. I literally, oh, oh I here she is. Texted you after my last fight, you didn't even respond. It's blue, blue, blue. It's it's. There's never been a mountain of blue texts like there is between me and you. It's blue, blue. I the that last time you responded to me <laughs> might have been 2016, but I'm still texting. I'm still out there <laughs> texting. I'm just never getting a reply. It's an unbelievable thing. <laughs> I'm a really bad texter. Wow. Really bad texter, I think, is actually being very nice. It got to the point where I, I felt like a stalker because there was no reply ever. Nothing. And then I did a, a sit-down interview for a great documentary coming out about you. I'm like, here I am spending 90 minutes talking about Tatiana. She can't even text me back. I can't even get a text back. It's unbelievable. <laughs> did it really take 90 minutes? It might have been two hours. Talking about your life. Oh, here I am talking about how great she is. She's the female Habib. She's a champ. She's back. She's back. Her injury, her this and that. I'm like, back of my oh mind, my God. what a loser I am. I can't even get, not forget about interview on the show. I, I can't even get a you reply. After my last fight, you never responded. You may have messaged my uh, old phone number. That may have been the problem. What? I have another Are number. You what? I changed my number. Well, why do you got two phones? I don't have two phones. I changed the number and I've texted you from the new number a thousand times. You just probably haven't made the change. <laughs> Maybe that's why I didn't know. Maybe that's why I was confused. Okay. Well, it's good I to talk to you again. you and then they, I was like, hey, you guys, you want to do an interview? And then you just never responded. I was like, I guess not. Yeah, well. I probably should have said that if I really did get the text because I've been ignored for so I long. I have a screen. I'll screenshot it. All right. Fair it. enough. Uh, now you should have my new number, but it's great to have you on. Uh, congrats <laughs> on the new fight. Congrats on the comeback win. Is it fun that you are, I would, you know, I'm going to ask you about it right now, but like, I feel like the comeback is no longer part of the story anymore. Now you're just back. So you don't have to talk about the comeback anymore. Now you're just like in the oh, flow. Oh man, it's nice. It's really nice because I was really sick and tired of the whole comeback thing. Yeah. I mean, I understand it. I understand it. But, um, you know, I don't know. Enough. It's just nice to just be back already. And now it's just I'm just going to focus on the next couple of fights. It's not really like, a, you know, they're not going to make a big deal about the comeback. It's just going to be me fighting again. Uh, why did you come back as a flyweight and now you are fighting as a strawweight? Because I was a chunky chunky girl <laughs> no I, I gained some muscle because uh i rehab my neck so like i spent a lot of time weight training and stuff for that then i rehabbed the knee so i spent more time weight training for that you know because it's like you have to make the leg stronger and everything so it was really like it was a long process and i just was like i just wanted to focus on fighting i didn't really want to focus on a weight cut my diet stress of that um, along with training, making sure that I'm healthy, you know, because a lot of times, you know, when you start cutting calories, your body breaks down a little bit easier. And I was just nervous because it was my first fight back after a long layoff and, and a big, big injury, you know, um, that I didn't want to, I wanted to make sure that my body was upheld during the, during the camp. And it actually didn't really up, uphold oh. that well, but, but, uh, but that's okay though. Cause like I still fought and I got through it and um, this camp's been a lot better in terms of that. So, um, I think, uh, I think my body was just, you know, not used to the rigorous work like that I was putting it through. Um, but I've been having back issues for like years now since the Grasso fight. I mean, when I fought Grasso, I literally just did like footwork and like grappled. I didn't do any type of wrestling. I didn't do any stand up training or anything like that because my back was just so bad. I could barely walk. I mean, it was horrible. And then I fought, but it's okay. Cause like I ended up getting a submission. So I guess all that grappling really paid off. <laughs> uh, were, were you close to pulling out of the comeback fight? No, just because I knew that I was not going to pull. I just didn't want to pull out. Like I didn't care. You know, I, I wanted to make sure. So there was a backup plan. Like if my back got really bad, um, they were just going to have me get on like this Metro dose pack, which was like an anti-inflammatory steroid for my back. Uh, but I didn't end up having to do it. So, wow. But like a lot of like most of my camp, I couldn't really go that hard because any type of explosive movements or anything like that really messed with my back. So I had to be like really tame in the grappling and the wrestling and stuff and stand up was really hard for me. Like any kind of twisting motion was like pretty bad on my back. But <clears throat> this fight has been or this camp has been a lot better on my back. So I think I'm just going to I think I'm I'm just like really excited about that because Obviously, you know, I was going to fight Verna, who was primarily a grappler, 
And not that we were only going to grapple because she stands up too. You know what I mean? Like her fight with Mackenzie, she stood up the entire time. I think her and Keith USA stood up most of the time as well. So I expected, you know, to to do either either of them. But this camp was just mo- mostly like being comfortable back on my feet again um, in terms of striking. Because my last camp, I didn't get to spar too much because of the injury and stuff. So, but this camp's been a lot better. So I've been able to stand up a lot more, which is something I love to do. So. Uh, just making sure that I'm comfortable in that aspect. In those four years away, were you ever close to saying goodbye to MMA? You had enough. You weren't going to come back. Um, so I hurt my neck. And then after that, I, um, I injured my knee. And um, like right when I was laying there, I, I really thought like, because I was like, I injured it pretty bad. I knew there was something wrong. I knew there was a lot wrong with it just because of the way it looked when it happened and everything. Just like how much pain there was when it happened. So I knew that it was a big injury. I knew it wasn't a small injury. I knew it wasn't something I could just be like, oh, let's just put some ice on this thing, you know? Um, I knew I was going to need surgery. And then uh, it turned out I did because I tore almost every single ligament in my knee and I needed to have it replaced. So after, like, when I was laying there, I thought that for, like, a second. I was thinking, like, like, I didn't understand it. You know, it didn't seem fair. But then, you know, I, I was, like, we were trying to figure everything out at one doctor said one thing, another doctor said another thing. And I was like, you know what, whatever, despite the fact I'm still going to come back and I'm still going to make that comeback. Cause I know how talented I am. I know how, um, and I'm not even, you know, I wouldn't even say talented. I would just say that like how, how much work I put in and like now, you know, I reap the benefits of that, like in terms of everything that I could do in the cage, you know what I mean? So it's like, I wouldn't say it's talent. But so, um, but I think um, for me, I'm just like, I know how good I am. No, I know that I'm the best. And I was just like, I can't quit because I know how great I am. And I will regret it for the rest of my life if I don't even try. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I want to be able to look at myself. And even if I came back and I had failed and didn't win the fight or something like that, and that wouldn't even be a failure. Who knows if I just lost? That's not a failure. You know, it's just a loss and another stepping stone. But if I, if I did lose, I would have been like, you know, it's fine. And I would have came back again, you know? So, uh, it doesn't really matter, but, um, I got the W so that, that was great. Um, but no, I thought to myself, I wasn't gonna, cause you know, uh, you know, my story, you know, I, um, and I was supposed to go to the Olympics, you know, for wrestling and didn't end up doing that. And I just thought to myself, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to be happy with myself if I like, missed out on two dreams you know sure so if i could still do it then i'm gonna do it you oh, know if oh. i'm still walking i love it. Maybe do it and that's what makes you so mm-hmm. special um obviously well publicized uh that you are in a relationship with patchy mix can i ask you when did that start and did the relationship help you get over the hump like he's an elite fighter one of the best in the world he's on fire right now congratulations to him uh i'd love to yeah. get him on the show too but i'm not allowed no big deal uh point is <laughs> Um, uh, did, did that relationship help get you over the hump? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so actually it did start when I, like, so when I met him, I was like hobbling around and it was right before the fight that I was actually supposed to have. And I met him then, but like nothing came of that. We just met, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, um, maybe a few months later, um, you know, I saw him again and then we ended up you know, um, he asked me on a date and then it just went from there, you know, but yeah, absolutely. He, um, definitely helped me. Um, there was days where like, you know, um, he's really great. You know, like there was days where like, I would just be like crying and I don't even know this guy that well yet, you know, and he's just like, you know, uh, like I'll make you dinner or breakfast, you know, stuff like that. And wow, um, what a having him around him, yeah, he is really good. Um, but yeah, like, uh, he just like, he's like, I know that you were having a bad day yesterday and I just wanted to make sure that this day was better for you. Something like that. You know what I mean? Wow. And, uh, so uh, I think um, I'm really grateful for that in terms of that. Cause I needed somebody cause I was here, you know, obviously in Vegas by myself. I didn't have anybody. It was just, you know, uh, my cousin, which I'm really grateful for because, you know, during that time I was off for so long and uh, you know, the, the money was just withering away cause I had been off for so long. So she was like you can stay here for free and then obviously the pi everything's here is for free so my food and everything and i was able to survive and then um, obviously have a camp and stuff like that okay and so um you know that was really really um 
really great for me because I had my family here. Uh, obviously, Pat here too, and he supported me along the way. How did you? How did you like? I mean, four years without earning money. What did you do? How I did can't you hear you. Do you, you not hear me anymore? Did you lose me? Hello. 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 For you, some reason, I can't hear you. You don't hear me anymore. What happened? Hello. 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 Yes. Do you hear me? Oh, I think I know what's happening. What's happening? Hold on one second. The car. It's going in the car. Hello. Yes. Hi. 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 One two one two. Hold on one second. Um, Bluetooth. Right. It's a darn Bluetooth. That's... Oh, hold on. Let me see if I can. Hold on. Oh, there she goes. What a day it has been. I bet someone. She said, but goodbye to someone. You know what? She said goodbye to someone. Okay, hello? Yes. Do you hear? Do you hear me? How come I? Uh, I could barely hear you. It's kind of weird. It's that darn Bluetooth, hold isn't on. it? I mean, that, it's okay. You know, there you go. Okay, we're back. We're back. It's that Bluetooth. Ah. It was the Bluetooth, right? Yep, I knew it because like because he had turned the car on because we had like we were waiting at a supercharger station. Ah, who and was it? Was it Patrick? The, yeah, he, he was right here. Oh, tell him I say hi. Oh, he's over there now. But uh, yeah, no, no, can't even he, say hi to him. I mean, this is crazy. I'll let him know. I'll let him know. I'll tell him he said hi <laughs> when he comes back. All right, fair enough. Fair but, enough. Yeah. But how did you support you, yourself you four happened, years? How did you support yourself four years? Like, there's no money. So I got really. Let, well, before, you know, I got paid really well for that last fight with Nina. Then I had some sponsorship stuff. The UFC, like, okay. kept coming with, to me with some stuff, too, which was, which it was, I was really lucky. I had a uh, Gymshark deal also that I had for a while that I was blessed to have because if I didn't have that, I probably wouldn't have made it either. So it was just, like, a lot of, like, managing stuff, you know, managing my money and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it was really hard for a while. And like, obviously when I got to Vegas, that was like the, you know, the last, uh, almost a couple of years. So it was like, uh, you know, it was really hard. I don't know, but I made it, ha I made it work. You're good now. Grateful. And, uh, I'm grateful. all due respect to Virna, this feels like a bigger fight. Do you feel like this is the fight that gets you the title shot? You know, um, I was really thinking about this because obviously, you know, with the position that I'm in. Um, I just don't really understand the division right now, though, because, you know, Jan just came back, came off of a big win over Andraj, you know, so I don't know where that puts me. Like, does that mean that me and Jan would fight? Does that, you know what I mean? I don't know what that, what that means. Or does that mean Jan already has those shot and she's just waiting for Lemos and Zang to fight and then I'm going to fight somebody else, you know? Um, mm. uh, but after that, like, you know, I'm, I I think that's what they're going to, I'm not exactly sure what they're going to have me do, you know, but um, I just know that I'm just excited for the fight because, you know, it's a great fight um, in terms of like, she's a former world champion. Um, she's, you know, beat a lot of great girls. So I, I'm looking forward to the competition. Do you feel like yeah. the storm has passed? Do you feel like it's, I mean, there's always ups and downs, but, uh, yeah, and, and I, I don't think that, uh, you would be insulted by me saying this, but like you were, you know, four years, a long time, you were turning into like the greatest, what if in MMA history, we all said you're going to be champion. It's inevitable, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then you kind of just disappeared. And obviously you had a lot that you had to overcome, but do you feel like now yeah. it's all going to come to fruition? Like the, you feel like the clouds have opened up in your life? I mean, it's almost, honestly, can I just say something? It's almost very symbolic that you're outside. There's flowers. It's a beautiful day. I see the blue sky. Because you know what? Usually, I don't know if you know this, but go back to every appearance that you've ever come on my show. You're always like in a dark room. And it's like a little <laughs> bit. Now, this I feel like this is almost symbolic of your life right now. Like it just feels like you've blossomed and, and, and everything has changed. Am I right about this or am I looking too much into it? This is just the funniest thing ever. I don't know, but no, I, feel I, like it. I think sure, sure. Let's let's say that, Ariel. That's great. That's great. I yeah. love the symbolism you guys are really talking about here. You're smiling. Um, you're happy. Usually, you're like all upset. You're surly when you come on. I mean, sure, you still don't answer I'm texts, never, but it's like I'm a little never, bit of a, yeah, a little bit of attitude. You're a little standoffish, but now it's like a whole different person. Sure, you showed up <laughs> ten minutes late to the interview and you don't reply to the text, but still, I feel like it's a whole new you who is in front of us right now. <laughs> Oh my God. I'm always 10 late, 10 minutes late to everything. So like, do not be like, okay, and right. you know, it's crazy as uh Ben told me, Hey, just get on early. And then I was like, you know, I don't know about that. Cause like, I've literally 
been late to everything today. At no one point last Friday, I was late to everything. Yet, I mean, I'm always late. I'm just, I have like the worst time management. Mm. But it was because I was so tired this morning. I was just like, I could not wake up. Ariel said hello. No, it wasn't just hello. Said- no, that's not fair the way you said that. It's hello, congratulations. You're one of the best fighters in the world. I would love to talk to you on the show one day, but you're not allowed to come on. That's okay. I don't want you to get in trouble. But I just want to say much love, and I'm very happy for all the success that you've had. That's what I wanted to say. Of course she freezes when I say all this. I mean, it's just not meant to be. We lost her? Ariel. Oh, she's back. You're back. I lost you there. Wait a minute, what? I lost you. Did he show up and then I I lost you? Did he yes. show up? Ah, oh, come on. Ah, uh, Patchy, it wasn't meant to be for us. What's wrong? Where is he? Where is he? Thanks, Appreciate hey, you, man. Patchy. Appreciate you. Bro. Much love, my oh, man. Us New Yorkers have to stick oh. together, all right? <laughs> Thank you. That's, okay. That's the future champ right there. Millionaire Patchy Mix. How about that? <laughs> He's super. I, I can't believe you missed him the first time. That's unreal. What do you say? What do you say? He literally the first time he said he said thank you, Ariel, and you can, he was like kind of blushing, Ariel. You know, he was kind of blushing. You know, he's but, not allowed to come on my show, right? I don't want to make this awkward. No, I know. Isn't that yeah, crazy? No. Isn't that messed up? Is that messed up or is that messed up? <laughs> <laughs> I have no comment. Like, I mean, I is can't. that crazy or what? What a world we live in here, Tatiana. But it's not about him. Let's talk about you. Uh, August 5th, <laughs> Nashville. By the way, what about Rose moving up to 125? Any truth to the rumor? You that know she... what? I'm just like so appalled by this. What? It's the really craziest thing I've ever seen. I'm like, I'm like, man, why to fight her? Oh. And like, it's not, you know, what's crazy is like, it's the craziest thing. Like, I thought you were appalled okay, about the, ma- the manager not letting me talk to Patchy. You're talking about Rose right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Go on. No, I can't. I have no comment about the manager. <laughs> go on, go on. So why are you appalled about Rose? <laughs> no, because I'm like, yeah, I'm back to 115. Maybe I can fight Rose. And yes. Like, She's going back to 125. I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, it's almost at a- the exact same time. Do you think it's... I know. You think it's related? I feel like it's unrelated. What do you think? I think she totally dodged me. No, I'm just kidding. Nah. I'm messing, I'm messing. <laughs> no, no, no. Not at all. No, I think this was her plan all along. You know, I'm not even, that's not even me. I wouldn't even say that no, even no. if I thought that. I think, I, isn't she yeah, cool no. with you? Aren't you guys cool? Yeah, every time I see her, like, and like, whenever I say I want to fight her, it's not even just because, it's not because, like, I just want to go beat, some, you know, beat her up or something, you know, like that. I don't like her. I just think she's such a good fighter. Like I'll watch her and I'm like amazed because how great she is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, I'm thinking, well, I want to fight the best of the best. Like, like I want to fight the best people because obviously that means that I'm the best when I beat them. You know what I mean? Or even if I don't beat them, I'm like, well, you know, I still shared the cage with an amazing mixed martial artist. Like, it's all about the competition for me. It's not about wins, losses, nothing like that. Like for me, it's about competition, testing myself. Like that's the stuff that I thrive on. You know what I mean? I, I do it every day in the gym. I'm the, I, I mean, I don't, man, like I saw this thing. I think it was like John Denneher or something like that. I think it was oh, him. Yeah. He was talking about not like, he's like, you don't have to be the best in the room, you know, this and that. And I always think that when I go into my practice, but then I'm still the best in the room or whatever it may be. Oh. But I'm thinking like, even if I wasn't like, you know what I mean? I like, it's crazy to me. Cause like, I always want to win in practice too. And, um, whenever I see somebody that might challenge me, that's the person that I want to go with the most. You know what I mean? Like, that's who I, who would want to go with, like, because I want to be the best, you know what I mean? And like, I always think about his, his thing when like, you know what I mean? Cause for me, like, I love to be the best, but, in the room, I'm like, if someone is going to give me a hard time, like I want to go with them. You know what I mean? Cause I know that's going to make me better. For like, sure. I put so much, I put so much pressure on myself, even in practice. I know I shouldn't, but I do, but that's what I makes just you the do best. that. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. But uh, yeah, a lot of people tell me I am the best when I go with them after. And it's just like, I know it. And that's what, that's one of the things that like kept pushing me through the, you know, the dark times where I felt like, man, this is it's really hard. But there was like some crazy funny stories like like during my comeback where it's like before my surgery, like it was super funny. Like my mom was like, Oh yeah, Tatiana. Cause at first it was like, 
they're like, yeah, look at this NBA player. He came back from the same injury you did. And then I read this article about it. And it's like, they're like, yeah, they were going to amputate his leg. And they thought about amputating his oh, leg because his injury was so bad. And I was like, are they going to amputate my uh-huh. leg? Like, I like it. <laughs> but then check this out, Ariel. I go on Instagram, literally like maybe 10 minutes later. And there's this girl doing deadlifts with one leg. And I was like, well, if she could do it, I can do it. <laughs> oh, my God. You are crazy. Well, look at this. I mean, you're like chatty Kathy over here. I've never seen you talk so much. You're so happy. The sky is open behind you. You got the blue skies. You got the flowers. What a different person. Uh, please feel free to respond to my text. It's great to have you on the show. We, uh, we're going to go to Brandon Moreno now. But thank you so much and good Amazing. luck to you. Amazing. Tell Brandon I said hello. I will say that. Uh, Viva Mexico and uh, all the best on August 5th. And we'll talk to you after the win on August 7th. All right? Thank, thank you, Ariel. All right. All the best. There she is. Tatiana Suarez joining us. And Patchy Mix. Does that one count as an appearance?